Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this uh, 3ds Max interior tutorial for uh, the Unreal 4 engine. So we're going to be now moving on to the stage of actually exporting this and uh, from 3ds Max and actually importing it into Unreal 4. So as you can see I've got the two rooms textured which are effectively the same room. Uh, I'm going to leave them the way they are for now and I've got the hallway uh, textured in a similar way also. Okay, so once that's done, um, obviously I've got some seams here. I'm not going to worry too much right now because this is just like a test environment. Um, I haven't really got the door frames created or anything like that. So I'm going to be taking these objects in as a base. Now there are different ways to export. You can export one room or one space at a time, or you can do them all together if you wish as well. Now one thing that you must do, uh, and I really recommend doing, is you name your material. So this one here is uh, the hallway uh, diffuse. You can see the hallway diffuse. I'm going to call this hallway underscore mat, just to enable me to uh, distinguish between um, meshes and materials. So that the underscore mats can tell me that that is a material. Now this is a uh, reception uh, reception underscore mats. Now the reason why I've got rid of the left there is because actually both sides uh, share the same texture so it's going to apply to both. Okay so I'm going to close that and then I'm actually going to select all three uh, just to kind of show you it can all be done as one big chunk and what that means is that because we've snapped it nicely uh, in our viewport in 3ds Max we don't have to actually snap it in Unreal 4. If you wanted to snap it in Unreal 4 you would just hold V on the keyboard and that would probably do a fairly decent job. So I'm gonna at the moment select all three. I'm gonna go to group. I'm gonna group it. So I'm gonna call it interior and then while it's selected go on to the move tool and we need to make sure that this is in the middle of our 3D space. So it's probably more important when you do an asset or anything on a specific pivot. Uh, but what we want to do with this is we want to ensure that our object is in the middle of our 3D space. Otherwise, what you'll find is that the pivot will be off center and it will be somewhere. It will be basically just here at the middle of our grid. So we're going to right click on the arrows uh, on the spinners down here uh, and each one just to reset the um, position of the object uh, to become or to be placed in the middle of our 3D space. Okay, so that's pretty much done. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go to File, Export, and Export Selected. So it's important that we go on to Export Selected so it doesn't bring in all the extra stuff that I've got in the scene. So Export Selected. And then going to uh, Browse to the folder. I'm going to leave it um, in my default export folder. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my project folder for this and I'm going to be creating a uh, exports folder. What that means is then obviously everything's going to go into there. In fact, I'm going to open that up in a new window as well, just so I've got it there. Uh, exports, I'm going to call this interior. Okay, now when you go into FBX export, now this is the default format, so if you missed that, you just go to File or the, the Max icon, you go to Export Selected, just to make sure we're only exporting the things that are selected. We go, uh, we leave the file type as uh, the default, which should be FBX, then we're just going to go in and um, set a particular file name, so like I said, Interior, and now there are like a whole host of different options you can pick. Um, smoothing groups should be on, uh, especially if you've got an asset where you've spent time setting up the smoothing groups. Um, Turbo Smooth, people actually get the wrong idea with what Turbo, Turbo Smooth does here now in terms of this checkbox. If you have it in your stack and you've applied the Turbo Smooth to an asset and you want it to go across into Unreal, then you need to deselect Turbo Smooth. Now the reason why that is, is because when you select it, it means it's going to maintain the mod modifier in your uh, modifier list or modifier stack. Um, so when you ex so you basically import the FBX into Maya or 3ds Max, it's going to keep that Turbo Smooth modifier as well. Whereas if you deselect this, then what's going to happen is it's actually going to compress it down into the edit, edit poly or edit mesh, which is actually really good because then it'll um, be visible when you take it into Unreal. 
Now that's some from some of the reading that I've been doing anyway, so test it out if you've got Turbo Smoothed objects. Um, what I'm also going to tick is I'm going to tick onto tangents and binormals. Now the reason why I export these is because it can help to uh, make your normal maps just appear a little bit better. Now especially if you have an asset, uh, these are sort of fairly flat, flat surfaces in the environment, therefore it shouldn't make too much of a difference. That I don't really need because it's convert, uh, it's convert deforming dummies to bones, so that doesn't really matter. Um, and preserve edge orientation should be on as well. Now you can triangulate the object, it depends really what the purpose is, but if your object surface looks a little bit odd in Unreal, then that could possibly solve the problem. Okay, I'm not gonna worry too much about animation, cameras, lights and stuff, because I'm actually not exporting any of this. So I'm just gonna um, collapse all these different options. We need to go to embed me Media, and we're going to tick onto embed media media now that's going to take across the material which is really important just saves you an extra step of having to bring all those materials into unreal um, and then we're going to go into advanced options we're going to go to units and again the default is automatic which is um, obviously a scale factor of one now it should be 1.0 if you remember we set up the units as um, as centimeters like at the beginning of the project so make sure the scale factor is one i still just like to take it off automatic and set it onto cms uh, just to be sure at that point you can actually just hit hit okay and then it should just save that out for you so that's exported so then the next thing is get Unreal 4, of course, uh, get it installed and then launch the Epic Game Launcher, which is where you actually launch your Unreal Editor or Unreal Engine from. So I'm going to launch mine, which is version 4.9.2. So just take a minute while that starts up. Now, once you get to this screen, you'll probably have the new project uh, panel. Uh, once we're in here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go with probably, well, I normally go the third person because then I just change the camera over. So I'll probably have a tutorial for that um, at some point as well. So I'm going to go with third person for now. Um, I'm going to go with no starter content because I don't want to have all the default stuff in there because it makes the project size really big uh, or bigger. And um, I don't really want anything because I'm going to be creating everything from scratch. Okay, I'm going to set the project folder. I'm going to leave it as default in the um, doc documents but you can obviously set this where you want by clicking on the three dots just here and that's gonna obviously take you in um, and then you obviously you can browse that folder okay then we're gonna go and name the project so I'm just gonna call this interior tutorial just to keep it simple it does not like spaces so if you try it, it's gonna give you an error and then you're gonna go and click on to uh, create project so it's just going to take a minute to start up the engine. Okay, so we're in here. Basically, we can go around and we can play in this uh, map, as you can see. But we don't want to be doing that. We want to actually be um, bringing in our interior. So I'm going to actually get rid of some of this stuff in here. So just everything I can see, just quickly select them and press delete. All this stuff I don't really need. Um, I'm going to go into more advanced setup of... Uh, the engine in terms of a project um, but with we're basically going to get rid of those panels and when we have when we have these black sort of shapes on the ground we're going to click on to build and that should build the lighting and um, the scene therefore look more realistic uh, as in getting rid of all these weird patches okay now next thing is we need we actually need to import that um, file in now the easy way, easy way to do it is if you go into the exports folder where you saved your export file you can just drag it in into there and then you'll get your importing window okay now when you're in here there are a couple of things to do if you're importing an interior you, you need to first of all deselect auto generate collision otherwise it's going to put a collision box around the outside of your interior and you'll never be able to get in there so we're going to deselect that Next thing is if you go and like I've just done it, if you expand with this little arrow, go down to where it says normal import method. I'm going to go with import normals and tangents. Now that's going to help because um, we selected the option within uh, 3ds Max where we were exporting the um, tangents and the normals, I believe. Um, so if you take this, it's just going to come across uh, better. 
okay now we have an option below import materials and import textures so you want to make sure those are selected because we want everything to come through uh, with the mesh as well so that, that, I think that's going to be fine for now there are other options but for now that's that's going to be okay we're going to click on to import okay so it's saying that the interior has a degenerate uh, tangent base which is a result of incorrect shading blah blah um, what that basically means is there are a number of different reasons why but it's to do with the unwrap possibly um, where certain parts haven't been unwrapped fully now again that is most likely to do with the door frames so the areas inside the door frames um, you know and I said it doesn't matter we're not going to have this unwrapped anyway so if that's not unwrapped correctly it's probably going to give you that error but don't worry too much about it it's not a massive uh, deal now we have the interior mesh here um, and we have the materials that, that have come in as well very nicely and then um, so we can actually drag this mesh out into this area just here so I'm gonna actually lift it up a little bit off the ground just so I know that um, it's not cutting through the ground if it helps also and the snap is too large you can deselect the um, enable snapping on the grid and just push it down until it's just over the ground there we don't want it to clip through at that point I can actually get rid of this bottom platform but one thing you'll find is if we even move our player if we select our player and we drag him forward a little bit and if we go into play then your player is going to fall through the ground basically okay so we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to be um, adding collision onto the interior so we're going to double click on the mesh just here we're going to scroll down we're going to then go to static mesh settings and then where it says collision complex I think if you just expand that complexity there is more to it uh, possible no, no there's not it's only collision co complexity if you go there click on the default the drop down and select the bottom option so use complex collision Blah blah blah. So we're just going to click onto that, and what that means is it's, it's a per polygon collision. So it's going to use every single surface uh, on this object to um, as a collidable object, as a collidable surface, basically. So we're going to hit save. We're going to close that, and now once you play, you'll notice that your player won't actually fall through the ground. There you go. So he's, he can hit the walls, he can go through the doors and stuff, which are nicely scaled. That would be where the front door goes. This is the other room just there. And then we nicely have uh, this area here as well. Now one last thing that I would like to do um, is to just make the textures two-sided because as you can see, we can see through the walls. And what that also means is that then the light can see through the walls as well um, and, the, and the ceilings because as you can see, it's very, very bright inside. We actually want it to be dark where the light is being blocked off by the ceiling. Okay, so we're gonna go in to the materials. We're gonna double click on each one on these spheres just here. Again, you know their materials because they have the un they have the um, the green line underneath the material, so that that signifies that that is a material. So we're going to double click that. Don't worry too much about this space just here. You're just going to scroll on the left, and you're going to tick onto two sided, which is just here. You're going to save that and repeat it on the same. Uh, sorry, repeat the same steps. So on the other part of the interior. So that that material is also now a two-sided object now once that's done we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on to build just so it can build the lighting uh, in this interior now there are a number of different variables when it comes to building lighting and having an interior uh, which looks realistic there's so many different factors honestly that um, at the moment it's going to be very difficult to go through now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of the light because it's actually shining in the wrong direction for me so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to go to rotate which is just up here and I'm going to be spinning the Sun so it's going that way and possibly let's go in like that as well let's have a look 
that's okay it's not too bad and once I've done that I can actually go to build again now again the surfaces won't look great because there's something to do with light maps uh, which I don't want to go into too much detail right now because you know it's gonna take a bit of time to make sure it looks okay uh, but this as you can see now once I've hit build um, you can kind of see how it looks obviously the shadows aren't that detailed and the interior looks uh, okay you've kind of got all the textures there you've got the flooring uh, you've got the different rooms in here as well okay but I'm gonna go into more advanced Unreal 4 engine stuff a little bit later to kind of fix all these weird issues that we're getting in the corridor uh, or in the hallway okay so this is like your first interior in Unreal you can run around in it you know you can move around you can navigate it and stuff like that but as the tutorials progress we're going to be moving on to more and more advanced different techniques so we're going to be probably in the next tutorial going to be looking at um, fixing some of these issues and also looking at um, the uh, specular maps normal maps and roughness maps so we can obviously get them applied on our materials just so that the surfaces look that more realistic because right now they're very flat uh, we actually want to have some you know some surface texture on them just to make them look more realistic basically okay so hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this tutorial um, if you're a little bit new to Unreal 4 then don't worry it does take a bit of time to get to get used to uh, I will have a specific Unreal 4 tutorial series starting up very soon seeing as now I'm moving into Unreal so some of this stuff might be repeated in those so if you're a little bit rusty might be a good, a good idea to go and check those out once they're out over the next couple of days um, like how to navigate the viewport uh, and all that kind of stuff how to kind of go to different viewports um, and what all these different panels mean because obviously there's a lot of stuff here so it's a similar thing if you use 3ds max um, think back to when you were new and there were so many different areas of the software and um, you didn't really know where or what everything did so that's um, one way that I want to make sure that you know we've got um, I've got you to the level where you at least understand what all the different panels are and what all the different options are. Okay, so once again, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please do hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.